So this is a correction to the self-driving portion of the video um, where the car was kind of like swaying back and forth in between the lanes. It turns out that I had to turn on a third feature which uh, I don't know the exact name of it but I call it um, steering lane um, lane steering so you would have to turn on the cruise control set the speed um, set turn on the lane departure feature and then also the lane steering feature and once you have all those three in place the the self-performing uh, driving of the car performs quite well so we're going into the bend right now and it actually goes into the curve and it's not drifting that much anymore as it was when I had the lane steering feature off so the self-driving feature in this vehicle is quite nice hello everyone this week's rental is the Hyundai Genesis G70 all-wheel drive four-door sports sedan it's actually a entry-level luxury sports sedan nice sleek styling sitting on 19 inch Kumo tires which are kind of low profile this is competing against other entry levels like the BMW the Mercedes C-Class the Audi S series BMW 3 series even the imports like Acura's Lexus and Infiniti the engine is powered by a V sorry an inline four terrible charge GDI engine and since it's mounted rear wheel drive you could actually you could tell that is a it's true all wheel drive and in there you can see the engine spooler or engine turbine or turbo turbine so very very powerful inline four turbocharged engine Moving on over to see the rest of the car. Very nice looking design car. And Hyundai, what I like is that since it's the luxury model, there's no Hyundai branding. It's just all the Genesis branding. Taking a look inside the trunk. Is, you can fit uh, four, about four carry-ons in here. Three or four carry-ons. It's a little bit elevated on the bottom because it provides a, looks like it provides almost like a full size uh, spare tire so that makes it takes up a little bit more trunk space let's hop in the back and see how the cabin space feels back there as a six foot tall person and six foot driving position I'm gonna hop on in here Ooh. 
and I just hit my head on the top so that's not a good sign all right so the fit is very snug but it is doable so I barely have any room luckily the back seat area it has this little indention to give myself a little bit uh, more comfortable seating position but it's still pretty cramped back here side little side pockets and storage area but I don't think you fit any cups or anything like that in there you have dual vents and a USB-A um, charging port. Over to the side, everything is wrapped in leather with headrest. Center area pulls down for armrest and two cup holders. So back here, it doesn't feel claustrophobic with the headroom space. You actually have a decent, there seems to be, I don't feel claustrophobic in the headroom. There is plenty of headroom space uh, up here. It's just the red room is kind of cramped. Um, other than that, uh, just to round out, you do have uh, rear seating uh, lighting controls all right so let's hop in the front and see what's going on up there okay so as i hop into the front i'm greeted with a very nice and cozy cockpit feels very comfortable dash is uh, analog uh, speedometer digital information in the middle and digital tactometer you have a nice leather wrapped steering wheel with uh, infotainment and phone controls bluetooth phone controls on the left and cruise control and safety controls on the right you do have paddle shifters it's eight gears. Uh, you have your windshield wiper on the steering column onto the right. Onto the left is your left turn signals. You have your buttons for gas, trunk, and hood. You have automatic windows controls and automatic locks. On the side, you have this little small storage space here. You have bigger storage space than the rear seating, and you could actually fit a cup holder in there. Moving on over to the center console, you have a wide 12 inch infotainment screen with. Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You have your air vents, your infotainment controls like volume and tuning on the side, and then you have buttons to shortcut buttons to get to the map, uh, the in car navigation, radio, um, external media and uh, setups and other options and favorites. You have your AC controls, AC and heater controls, climate controls uh, near the bottom. This car has heated seats and heated steering wheel, which is very nice. In the center console, you have a space to fit a phone and 12 volt cigarette charger 
US and two USB. One of them connects to the infotainment system. Over here, you have your gear controls. It's kind of wonky because you press the P for park, but when you drive, you go down to drive and then you have to go up for reverse which is a little bit of getting used to you also have your drive mode here because this is a sports sedan it has your sport mode your sports plus mode a custom eco mode and comfort modes. You have also buttons for rear cameras and electronic parking brakes, two cup holders, center console is standard, a little bit on the smaller side with an extra USB power charging port. Glove compartment is standard size as well too. The whole car is wrapped in leather. It does feel entry level premium. Nice head space up at the front here. You do have your lighting controls. There is no type of sunroof, which I think for this they should have provided. Uh, visibility out of the car looks pretty nice there is some uh, blind spots on both sides but there is a host of safety controls for you during the road while driving on the road so on that note let's take the car and see how it performs on the road Okay, so how's the driving experience in the Hot Bay Genesis G70 four door turbocharged inline four turbocharged sports sedan? It's very nice. The, the car is very comfortable to drive overall. It's a good blend of sports and comfort and luxury brakes as you can see right here is very responsive and bites and grips suspension is also very nice it's not too stiff it's not too soft it's uh, just right kind of goldilocks uh, turning, steering, since it is all-wheel drive, um, it performs really well. It was raining last night and I took it to the test, uh, do it in the curves and it does hold its own very, very well. So, and of course the engine, the inline four, turbocharged provides plenty of power throughout low end mid and high let's see here if I can show you real quick let me slow down I'm on the highways of Oklahoma so the speed limits a little bit slower let me break to start at 50 and then a little bit of turbo lag but it shoots up to 80 really quickly so no problems with the power I think this uh, engine configuration comes from the Kia Stinger which is from what I heard is highly praised so kudos to Hyundai for providing a great engine Cabin noise could be a little bit, uh, it's moderate. I mean, 
you could hear uh, outside noises, but as a, the stereo system is pretty great. Uh, so if you're listening to music, you won't even notice. Speaking of that, the infotainment system, it is a pop-up display, but it, it, the way that you're seated, uh, my head is right here, so it's not very intrusive to uh, driving. This is kind of like a smart driving vehicle. It has a lot of uh, safety features. One of it being um, lane departure. So if you're going to veer across the lane without using the turn signal like so, it's going to get you back into the lane. And it's quite aggressive. It's um, more aggressive than the ones in Toyota's uh, driving sense, but it is uh, pretty nice um, to, to have as well. What I really like is the, I guess, uh, the self-control, the semi-self-control. Uh, semi self control uh, driving, which kind of is uh, similar to the Subaru Legacy one that I reviewed earlier. Basically, you set your cruise control on the highway, and it has the front and rear uh, anti collision and uh, also the lane departure and it will cruise at the speed and keep you within the lanes as long as you have your hand on the steering wheel so i'm about to go on a turn a curve turn so let me show you how that works Okay, so I have my cruise control set at 45. There is a car in front of me. And let me speed up to him real quick, or to the car real quick. And it will brake if it gets too close and it will stay in the lane. It's not as robust, uh, the staying in the lane is not robust as in the Subaru Legacy, but because what I mean by that is because, okay, so here we are coming up on a bend. So we kinda, my hands are off. It says keeps it on so it's actually kind of just staying on in the lane by itself now that's what I mean where it's not robust uh, as the legacy because it kind of drifts in between the lanes in the other systems um, it does a very good job of just staying in centered in the lane, but in this one, it kind of drifts uh, to the left and the right end of the lane, which can be a little bit uh, concerning. Uh, but overall, uh, that self-driving is uh, pretty nice, and I think it's going to be coming standard to a lot of cars in the future so a very nice uh, feature once again let's see here I'm coming up on another bend and it doesn't work so well in that instance maybe because there's too many lanes for it but on like a one lane 
let's see if it stays in. Yep, so we kind of just adjust the steering wheel a little bit. Let's see how it drifts to the left. Uh, it, it's trying its best to stay in the center, but it's not. Now it's drifting to the right, so it compensates. So it's not a very uh, steady, stable, self-driving experience, but it's capable enough to help you uh, stay safe out there on the road. Other, speaking of being on the road, it is very um, stable on the road. Um, uh, you don't get um, pushed around in high winds or anything like that. It has a big 15 gallon gas tank, gives you about 350 to 400 miles on the road so it is a gas saver being the inline four and being turbocharged now as a rental car this is a full sized uh, rental so uh, usually i uh, the cars that i i rent are uh, mid-size but i do get kind of like free upgrades so this is a full size, uh, so this would be an upgrade and the rental would cost a little bit more. But it's, I think it's very well worth the money. Uh, it's an all around good driving experience. I give kudos to Hyundai uh, for their um, entry level sports sedan um, in the luxury market. I'm glad that there's a, another competitor in there and another choice for car buyers to have. But as a rental, I rate it as an A. I would definitely rent this car again and choose it again. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.